Hello and welcome back to the channel for another Doctor Who collection related video. Now I often get asked to do an updated room tour or Doctor Who collection tour. Yes, that is coming eventually. I have basically just been putting it off because it's going to be quite a big undertaking, frankly. But I also know that when I do make that video, I won't be able to cover every single thing in detail. I kind of want to focus in on particular sections of my collection. And so that's where this new strand of videos, Doctor Who Collection Showcase, has come from. So today I'm going to be taking you through my Character Options Sonic Screwdrivers. Now my collection is by no means complete, there's about four or five variants that I'm missing, but it's near enough to warrant showing I think, and I have got pretty much all the main variants. So the earliest Sonic Screwdriver I own is this fourth Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver. It's not the first one to appear in the show, and that was the second Doctor's screwdriver obviously, but that hasn't been made in toy form. There has been a third Doctor's one made, but that's not one that I've ever picked up, although it is very much on my list of ones to get in the future. Now this was first released back in 2009, I think. This isn't the original version, this is one of the re-releases, uh, the numerous Sonic Screwdriver re-releases that were issued sort of between 2013 and 16, I think, or 17, or something like that, after the, the 50th. So, yeah, it's nice enough. Obviously, it's not got any light effects. It has got four different sound effects, but I believe they're not actually screen accurate to classic era Doctor Who. It's the newer series sound chip. So it's got the first one, the second one, and then if you pull the middle down three times, you get this one. And then if you do it four times or more, you get this one. So, a nice enough Sonic. I have to say, not one of my favourites. I do find this design a bit bland, really. And this end piece is annoying because it's not a hard plastic like the rest of it. I'm not sure if this is screen accurate or not or anything, but it's a sort of more flexible plastic. In fact, it almost feels like you could just snap it off if you weren't too careful with it. I think overall I do prefer the look of the third Doctor's Sonic just because it has a bit more going for it really. It's a bit more of an interesting design with that yellow band with the, the black stripes across it. So yeah, that's definitely what I need to pick up at some point in the near future. Then we move on to the eighth Doctor's Sonic. So yes, there's another gap in my collection here. I don't own the fifth Doctor's Sonic, which I believe is pretty much the same as the fourth Doctor's, but just with a white stripe somewhere or other, uh, just because that's how it was in the, the 80s, obviously. Again, this is one of the Sonics from those Sonic Screwdriver waves from wave three, I think, or four maybe. And when I bought it, I did actually think it was a fourth Doctor's Sonic for some reason. It wasn't until I got home and opened it up that I realized it was an eighth Doctor's one. I basically just grabbed it off the shelf because I got it at the same time as the 13 Doctor's set in 2016. And the weekend I got it, Toys R Us were doing this special offer for Christmas or something like that, where if you spent £100, you could get £20 off. You could essentially get £100 worth of stuff for £80. Now, the only trouble with that was that the 13 Doctors set was £99.99, I believe. So I couldn't make use of the offer without spending a little bit more. And yeah, I basically just saw this on the shelf. It was reduced to, I think, £4.99 or something and picked it up, thinking it was a fourth Doctor one, I think, uh, but obviously it wasn't. I have to say though, probably that worked out for the better because I do prefer this design. Uh, right from the off, the top bit here, it's still ever so slightly flexible, but it feels more robust than the fourth Doctor's one. And obviously as well, it's got this added feature of the red, whatever the hell this thing is here. And also this gold band round the handle. So overall, yeah, I think it's just a more appealing design all round, really. It does include a rather ugly, weirdly placed button here for the sound effects, which are, by the way, just identical to the fourth Doctor's one. I think pretty much all those Sonics from those waves had the same sound chip in them. So, you know, your, your standard two Sonic effects and then that one and that one. Again, you know, it's nice enough. Probably not as nice as the third Doctor's Sonic, so it's ironic that I don't actually own my favourite one out of all the classic ones. But uh, yeah, as I say, I think it is nicer than the fourth Doctor's Sonic and just a nice one to have, really. 
Next up we have the War Doctors Sonic. Now this is the first time actually I'd got my hands on a classic series Sonic. Well, classic series in the fact that it uses the same handle. Yeah, I got this when it was initially released back in like February 2014, I think, around the same time the figure was released. And yeah, I was very excited for it at the time. As you might be able to tell from the scuffs around the handle, it has been fairly well played with and thrown around and dropped and things. And for that reason, this is a Sonic that has a special place in my heart, I will admit. I think it's a, a neat design as well. I like how it's all just streamlined to that nib at the top, almost like a, a pen basically, isn't it? Uh, just that very nice sort of streamlined column without any extra bits and pieces flying off it. And unlike those other variants, it has four different sound effects. I have to say I'm not entirely sure what the origin of these is. Is it the original classic series sound chip? I'm not sure, but anyway, here are the four sounds. So you've got that one, that one, that one, and that one. So that's the War Doctors Sonic, or indeed as it was called at the time, the Other Doctors Sonic, back when John Hurt's incarnation was referred to as the Other Doctor rather than the War Doctor. Uh, I guess you can sort of see why they might not want to put that on the packaging. But yeah, overall, a pretty neat Sonic, I think. One that's probably quite overlooked. And now we're talking, it's the 9th and 10th Doctor's Sonic screwdriver from the RTD era. The very first Sonic that I ever owned. So far memories of playing with this one, definitely. Uh, to the extent where it doesn't actually work anymore. I think I have tried new batteries recently. I've sort of lost track, to be honest. I think I've swapped some other ones in, but... Uh, yeah, it was working, now it's not, so I'll have to see if I can fix that at some point in the near future. And also because of how well played with it was, for many years it was missing this cap that goes on the, the slider and also the screw that goes underneath it, so this central piece wasn't held in place properly, which was an absolute nightmare. Not quite sure how I managed to lose them, but then more recently, as part of a job lot, I got another 9th, 10th Doctor's Sonic screwdriver, and so I was able to substitute the screw and the cap and finally have it back in working order once again. Overall, probably not one of my absolute favourite Sonic screwdrivers, but as a toy it worked tremendously well, you know, with the pen nib on the end and the invisible ink thing with the psychic paper. So definitely one that holds a special place in the hearts of many adults today, I suppose, from their childhood. And yeah, I would include myself in that. Not my favourite Sonic of all time, but one that is definitely very, very special. And now a brief detour for the Master's laser screwdriver, which I got around the same time. And like that previous 9th and 10th Doctor's sonic screwdriver, this one wasn't working for quite a number of years as well, because this central piece had become misaligned, so when you press the button, nothing happened. Eventually, I did manage to get it working again. It was a bit of a faff, but well worth it to hear those sound effects again. So it has two sound effects, this one, as well as a spring-loaded action for the central part. So you can either press it once and then let go, or press it down and keep your finger held down. And you can also turn around this cracked bit on the bottom, which I believe is the master's isomorphic controls on the screwdriver, though it's a while since I've watched the story, so I couldn't say that for sure. Again, this is just such an iconic design. I mean, I'd say it's probably almost as iconic as the 9th and 10th Doctor's Sonic, really. It was used on a lot of merch, a lot of promo images, obviously, with John Sims Master holding it, and yeah, again, I have a soft spot for it for that reason. You know, it's a really fantastic design. And uh, yeah, another one that works really, really well as a toy. Some really fantastic effects on this one. Moving into the Matt Smith era, we have the 11th Doctor's Sonic from Series 5, released in 2010. Now, it has been re-released a number of times since, but many of those re-releases have the best feature of all, really, the spring-loaded action for the claw, removed. It just has all of the claw as one sculpt, one piece, which is a bit of a shame, really. Uh, so I've never picked up any of those, as you could probably imagine. Yeah, this original release is superior in pretty much every regard, but there is one thing that does drive me absolutely mad about it, which is this end cap on the bottom, 
which just flaps open whenever it wants to. I mean, you can see I've barely had to do anything. I've opened it now and it's not staying closed. Yeah, a very weird feature. It has this red button on the bottom, which doubles up as a button for the Sonic. Um, if it will work, maybe it's stopped working actually. Oh, that's a surprise to me. Uh, even more annoying than it, you got a button that doesn't work. But yeah, when it did work, um, you could just use it to activate the same light and sound effects that this button activates. So obviously you uh, need two effects like that. And then like those classic era Sonics, it also has the two hidden effects. So if you press the button three times, you get this one. And if you press it four or more times, you get this one. Yeah, again, I mean, this is a Sonic that has a really special place in my heart. I think when you say Sonic Screwdriver to me, this is the one that I, I think of, you know, this design and this toy, really. Because this is the one that was the biggest part of my childhood, more so than the, the ninth and 10th Doctor's one. You know, when Series 5 came out, I was, what, 9? And then 10 and 11 as the 11th Doctor era, you know, progressed. This is the Sonic for me. It's not necessarily my favourite design, but at the same time, it's completely iconic. You know, the claw, the green light the sort of bronze and silver colours on it and the, the cream of the handle down here and the black. Uh, it's just such an iconic silhouette for me. And so, yeah, it does have a really special place in my heart. Just a shame about the toy having this stupid flappy thing on the bottom that never, ever stays shut. But hey, what can you do? So you might think you're seeing double here, but that's not the case at all. This is the 12th Doctor's touch control sonic screwdriver. So. Yeah, basically the same one as the one I've just showed you, the 11th Doctor's one. And obviously on screen, the 12th Doctor did use the same Sonic, at least for Series 8 and the start of Series 9. But this one has a couple of new nifty features. I mean, for a start, it doesn't include the flap on the bottom, thank God. So you can, you know, shake it about and do whatever you want with it without the bottom falling off. But the bottom is still removable. You get this rather cool little, uh, oh gosh, I've forgotten what it's called. I think it does have a name, and I think it is actually screen accurate. I think this is the thing that the 12th Doctor gives Ross, I think it is, the soldier and into the Dalek, when he gives him something to eat to get the antibodies of the Dalek to go towards him or something like that. So, uh, yeah, but nevertheless, even if it wasn't screen accurate, you know, that's still a really cool feature. Some lovely paint apps on it, lovely sculpt. One downside to this Sonic is that it does have this rather ugly battery cover on it on the handle which wasn't there on the previous version that is just purely i think because the two halves aren't removable you can't take them out to remove the batteries that way like you can in, in other variants but as you'll be able to hear from me just holding this sonic and placing my fingers basically anywhere on this black bit in the middle it does have this very cool other feature which is a new feature for the sonic it hadn't been used on any models before this and it is as the name suggests a touch control feature. So there's no button here, there's a button to get the claw going. Oh, and that's another thing that's wrong with mine actually, the nib on the end rather unfortunately has uh, come loose, so I do tend to keep this closed. But yes, as I was saying, basically if you just place your thumb where the button would have been, you get the light and sound effect, which is really cool because, you know, it's close to how it is in the show and just in its own right, it's fantastic feature to have that there and to you know have no bus and it just feels a bit more futuristic and otherworldly i suppose so all round a much improved version of the 11th and 12th doctor's sonic screwdriver i mean the paint apps as well are much nicer on this one there's the touch control going off again yeah it has a bit of a mind of its own but uh yeah it's worth it really really great uh, definitely one that's worth getting your hands on if you can i'm not quite sure how easy they are to get hold of these days but it is definitely the ultimate version of this sonic and so for that reason it is well worth picking up next up a little oddity from 2012 the trans temporal sonic screwdriver which uh yeah is is a bizarre little piece but quite funky i quite like it i mean it's a bit flimsy uh, partially because mine is missing the central column with the sound and light effects that goes inside so the pieces do break apart fairly easily so yeah you can pull apart all of these bits i think there are four pieces in total the, the, the nib on the top here 
then two parts, the handle and the, the end on the bottom. And that makes it compatible with the personalized your Sonic Screwdriver set released the previous year. So nice if you've got that. Unfortunately, I don't have that set. It's one of the few Matt Smith era pieces of merchandise from character that I'm currently missing. But uh, yeah, it's one that I'm very much trying to track down eventually. I mean, the background on this, if you don't know, is that back in 2012, obviously there was no Doctor Who on until the autumn, much like this year, really. So character kind of panicked and thought, what we're going to do, and basically just came up with their own sonic screwdriver design so they could have something in the shops, you know, before September the 1st when Sound of the Daleks came on. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it's nice enough, I guess. I do quite like the look of it. I will give it that, you know, it's a nice thing to look at but I can't really bring myself to put it alongside the other Sonics on the shelf. At the end of the day, it's not something that was seen on screen, it's not canon, to use the uh, the controversial C word, but you know, it's it's nice enough. I, I, do, I do quite like this one, you know. As I say, it's not something that I would put on the shelf with the others, but it has its own sort of charm about it, and so for that reason, yeah, I, I do have a bit of a soft spot for the trans-temporal Sonic screwdriver. Next, we have the 12th Doctor's second Sonic Screwdriver, released just the once in May 2016, around about then, I think, after Series 9 had aired in that gap year for Doctor Who in 2016. And I have to say that this is probably my favourite Sonic Screwdriver design, or rather, my, my favourite toy of the Sonic. Yes, it is a bit much to look at sometimes, you know, with all these embellishments, these bits coming off that you think, if they really need to make it quite so much. Uh, but nevertheless, I think it's a really impressive toy. It's a really impressive sculpt, very accurate to what was seen on TV. And yeah, it's just got a really nice feel to it. It feels very quality, this one. I think just because it has got so many different colors and different parts on it. And it's just unique, really, compared to the others. I mean, yeah, it's not as streamlined perhaps with all these bits on it you know for that reason it's different and it stands out and just like it did on tv this sonic can light up blue and green so if you slide the slider up it goes green and if you slide it down it goes blue and then it's also got two hidden lights and sound effects so if you press this slider up twice you get the first one which is this lovely flashing green with a, a rather strange but nice ethereal sound. And then if you take it down twice, you get this one, the sort of circling round, which is really, really nice. And that's in blue, obviously, as well. It's just a really great toy, this one. I think even if you don't have the design, you can probably admit that, you know, it is a fantastic replica of it and just in its own right, it makes a fantastic display piece, fantastic replica of this Sonic screwdriver. It's one that's very hard to get hold of these days. I mean, I think on Amazon, the current listing's for about 40 quid, which is just mental because it was only about 15 when it came out. But like I said, this Sonic has only been released once, probably because of how complex the design is. You know, it's probably out of the question for the 10 quid standard re-releases in the Sonic Screwdriver Waves. But uh, yeah, it would be nice if they re-released it somehow, if they could find a way of doing that just for people that never got hold of it, because it's just a really, really great toy. Really, really fantastic. And finally, we have the current Sonic Screwdriver used by the current Doctor Who, Jodie Whittaker, the 13th Doctor. Well, I say finally, I have actually got two versions of this. This is the original release, released back in 2018 in the summer, before Series 11 had even aired, you know, back when it was revealed at Comic-Con, and there was that weird sort of period where, you know, we hadn't seen this Sonic on screen, we hadn't seen it being made by the 13th Doctor, you know, in, in Sheffield in the episode, but you could own it, you could own a proper bit. It was just a, a mad time, really, to be able to own something that hadn't even been on TV yet. So sadly, this version has given up the ghost, which is a shame, uh, but it did give me the impetus to buy the second version, which came out just a few months later along down the line. And actually, in a sense, this is screen accurate. You could say it's from the Sranga Conundrum when the Pating spat it out and it wasn't working properly. 
And so here we have the second version of the 13th Doctor's Sonic Screwdriver, released a few months down the line, as I say, with some running changes. Nothing too major, just some fairly minor things like the wash applied to it, the silver colour is slightly different as well, uh, the screws appear to be darker, I'm not sure if that's just an effect of the wash, and the transparent plastic is now frosted, it's a bit more opaque rather than the completely transparent version used on the, the previous variants of this, which was basically completely see-through, so you could sort of see the interior workings of it. It was a bit less mysterious than it could have been, because you could just see the wires and, and stuff inside. And by far the best thing about this Sonic is that, again, it utilises touch control technology. It is a bit temperamental, I'm trying to get it to work now, and it's not really happening. Oh, there we go, there it is, but yeah, basically, if you hold it in the right position, the lights come on just by themselves without you having to touch a button or anything. And just to give you an idea, this is how the touch control feature works in complete darkness. So quite a bright, powerful light on it. I think the first version wasn't quite as bright, but they fixed that for this, this more recent release. And that's it with the light up nib as well. So a really fantastic replica of the 13th Doctor's Sonic Ray. I mean, again, even if you're not a fan of this particular design, you can't really deny that this is a fantastic toy. That touch control feature is just so cool. It makes it feel like a, a living thing or at least a working thing, just with this flashing going on in the background without you having to even press a button. And this Sonic has three different sound effects. So it's got the standard one. And then new for this particular model, the diagnostic sound effect, which happens if you press the button twice. And then similar to the one on the 11th and 12th Doctors Sonics and then the whole host of classic re-releases as well, it has that sort of buzzing sound effect if you press the button at least three times. So yeah, again, this is one that I do really like actually. It's not one of my favorite sonic screwdrivers ever but the toy of it is fantastic and even if you don't have the design you know you can't deny that the touch control feature is really cool and it just looks super and yeah what else can i say it's just a, a really really nice replica of the current sonic screwdriver oh so there we have my character options sonic screwdriver collection as it currently stands like I said at the start, this isn't a complete collection by any means. There are five main variants that I've still got to track down. They are the third Doctor Sonic, the fifth Doctor Sonic, the weird sort of mint green re-release of the ninth Doctor Sonic from those Sonic Screwdriver waves, River Song's Sonic, or the future Sonic Screwdriver, as it's sometimes referred to. Oh gosh, I wish I'd got this one when it was originally released, because these days it just goes for stupid stupid money. And yes, it's been re-released a number of times since, but all those re-releases are just rubbish compared to the original, frankly, because they don't contain basically the, the two main features of the Sonic, the removable cap to show the neural relay, what have you, underneath, and the two light colours, the red and blue. I believe all the re-release versions just have one or the other. So that's one that I can only hope and pray to find for a reasonable price one day, hopefully. And then finally we have the 10th Doctor's Sonic from the Day of the Doctor. That weird variant released back in 2014, around the same time as the War Doctor's Sonic, which is screen accurate to the Day of the Doctor, but not to the RCD era itself. It's quite an obscure variant, not essential by any means, and definitely a controversial one. But yeah, I quite like it, and again, I wish I'd got that one at the time when it was first released, because these days, yeah, you don't really stand a chance. But anyway, enough about the Sonics that I don't own, these are all the Sonics that I do. I really hope you've enjoyed me taking you through these today. Well done if you've stayed the course right until the end. Please do let me know in the comments below what your favourite Sonic Screwdriver designs are, and also what you think of the toys here in front of me. Which ones do you own? Which ones do you wish you own? Let me know in the comments below. Please subscribe if you're new and like the video if you enjoyed it. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and goodbye for now.